What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and today in this video, I'm gonna be showing you the latest Pixel experience ROM on this device. But before I begin this video, let me finish a thing that I did not show you guys in the previous video that I made on the Redmi K20 Pro and that is about the ROS over here and as you can see on the Redmi K20 Pro, I am on the latest 12th March 2021 build of the ROS 11 over here. Yes, I have updated it and on that build, I have said that there is no fingerprint scanner animation but if you notice right now as you can see there is the fingerprint scanner animation which i just could not find while shooting that video so let me show you how can you like find it or enable it for that you have to just go into the security settings then over here as you can see there is no option to actually do that from here but yes it is a little bit hidden which is in this settings icon here in the screen lock on the right if you notice the settings icon if you tap over here you will find all these options like lock after like screen timeout over here and then we have power button instantly locks and we have FOD recognizing animation that is the fingerprint scanner animation you have to enable from here and after you enable that you will get all these options like the MIUI default AOD light pop pulse etc and there is the other options like McLaren and stuff let me show you if I select the McLaren one right now from the lock screen if I show you guys as you can see the fingerprint scanner like animation over here just happens really really cool and from these recognizing animation effect again you will see a lot of options like this like DNA future etc you can set any of them but yes the scanning or the cyberpunk 2077 animation is just not there and there is also the screen of fingerprint option so if you want to enable that you can so right now let's start talking about the pixel experience rom on the redmi note 7 pro and yes this rom is also available for the devices like the redmi k20 pro but for the redmi k20 pro the pixel experience rom is based on oss vendor that's why i did not try the pixel experience rom on that device instead i am trying it on the redmi note 7 pro so this is the build right here you will find on the latest telegram of the violet official updates channel and here you will see this is the 10th march 2021 build over here the download size is about 1.36 GB over here it says there is the change log and stuff and by the way I have flashed the pixel experience plus ROM here you can also try the pixel experience ROM the normal version which does not have customization at all but I like a little bit of customization that is why I went with the pixel experience plus ROM. Yes both versions are available in the website and you can get the links from the description box below of course and both the versions include the gapps you should not worry and there is also the support group I listed below too if you are like having some issues over here but yes I have used orange box recovery to flash this ROM and my storage is decrypted if you don't know how to flash this pixel experience plus ROM on your redmi note 7 pro you can click on the card right there and of course this is an android 11 based ROM right now let me show you the about section first here we have the android version as android 11 of course as you are noticing we have the security patch is of latest march 5th 2021 and the stock kernel is pixel gb kernel over here it says and the build number you can notice from here as you can see again pixel experience plus for violet 11.0 and 10th march 2021 build date and official build of course and if i go into the system this is how it looks like we also have a system updater so that is cool we have the maintainer's name over here shubham das so huge thanks to him for developing this amazing rom and we have this donating button then the forum website news etc options and of course whenever there is a new update you can check for the updates from here let me go back we have the other options like the status bar option and this is where you get the customizations and here if you go into the network settings we have these kind of network settings and you can enable the network traffic indicator over here but i'm using a separate app for this and here we also have the system icons over here you can enable the headset bluetooth etc icons no issues and we have the double tap to sleep too so double tapping on the status bar does make the phone sleep also there is the like double tap to wake over here and there we have the clock position and stuff you can choose it to right or left and we have the show seconds and there is the ampm style you can also enable the ampm style if you want to and we have the battery style you can change the battery icon portrait or the circle or the text option and there is also the battery percentage you can make it hidden or you can put it to inside the icon or you can put it to next to the icon so yeah the battery percentage showing up over there on the status bar as you are noticing and here we also have the brightness slider so you can have it show always show when expanded and never show option is there 
and there is also the auto brightness and the brightness control this is you can like adjust it over here just by sliding a finger on the status bar as you can see adjust the brightness of the screen this is a really handy feature for me at least and i use it on a daily basis and i like this feature a lot and then we have the quick pull down the column and row number customization so those are working fine and inside buttons we have the system navigation and from here as you can see if you go into the settings we have the edge touch area over here you can customize it as you are noticing like it shows this kind of blue area where you can go back so yeah you can have it on full but as you are noticing there is no option to actually increase the size of the spill bar so that's how it is there is also the gesture indicator and if you turn it off as you can see the pill bar completely hides from there so that's how it is and let me just enable it right now and we have the two button and three button navigation too and there we also get the settings and as you can see we have the invert layout settings for the two button navigation and compact layout etc and also in the three button navigation we have the invert layout separately so this is really great that you can actually invert the layout on both kind of two button three button navigation if you are using them let me go back we have the power menu and from here we have the advanced restart so as you can see from the power menu if i show you this is how the google smart home controls appear and if you tap on restart as you can see right now you can directly reboot to recovery or fast boot from here or you can just reboot the system so this is great that you get the advanced reboot over here on the pixel experience plus rom and we also have the sensitive content device controls etc you can disable if you want to and we have the end call option by pressing the power button while you are in a call and we have the long press power button to toggle torch and we have the automatically turn off torch option then we have wake device control playback and the reorient click to take partial screenshot and stuff those things are there now inside gestures we have the swipe rig screenshot and let me show you this is the three finger screenshot gesture but it does not have the scrolling or the delete option but you can edit them if you want to just from here this is just a google's markup kind of thing so yeah this is great that you can actually like do a lot of like editing over here just after taking a screenshot and inside power menu we have those things again and inside gesture navigation again we get those and inside quickly open camera we have this option by just double pressing the power button you can quickly open the camera and the sock keyboard over here is gboard because this rom includes the g apps of course let me right now show you the home screen this is how the home screen of this ui looks like definitely this is the pixel launcher present by default over here pixel experience rom pixel launcher of course and over here if you swipe up you get the app drawer and if you swipe down on the home screen you get the quick settings panel swiping to the left gets you to the google's discover page so that is not an issue the widgets and stuff on the home screen is working totally fine if i show you the home screen settings this is how it looks like there is also the suggestions disabling option so that is good but it takes a little bit of time to get into and we have these add app icons to home screen and stuff swipe to access google app etc overview suggestions you can disable them and notification dots again is there now let's start talking about the stock camera this is the stock camera that you get by default over here this is the google camera go edition yes it takes basic pictures no issues with that and you get these kind of settings for the rear camera and if you switch to the front camera this is how it looks like and again you can enable this face retouching option or something like that and you can take a selfie there is also the portrait mode and the portrait mode should be working fine as you are noticing there is again the face retouching thing and even with the rear camera you can take portrait mode like pictures and even in the video settings as you are noticing there is also the translate option you can increase or decrease the brightness a little bit if you want to so yeah that's how that stock camera works very basic and cool camera i would say in my opinion the google camera go is a really great stock camera but again the anx camera if it was present over here that would have been really really better if you want to install the anx camera version 185r with magisk you can click on the card right over there and get the anx camera on your device and you can install it and use anx camera on a pixel rom but nonetheless i'm fine with that i have also installed the unix version of the latest like google camera over here this is the px kind of version and from here i have selected this pixel awb to the imx586 and with that taking normal photos or even videos is totally fine and there's a 2x telephoto kind of zoom over here that you get and also if you want to take night side kind of pictures you can take those with that but you have to install it separately for that you can click on the card right over there 
Talking about the quick settings panel, this is how it looks like. And yes, you can add a couple of toggles over here. And as you can see, these are the options that you get for the quick toggles when you like go to the edit option. And I have added a couple of toggles. And after adding them, let me show you. Here we have the stock Android 11 screen recorder. And with that, you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time. So that is not an issue. And also there is the nearby share and stuff. Then we have the dark theme option. And also you can disable heads up and that's it. We do not get any reboot toggle or FPS info. Those kind of toggles are simply missing from this ROM. Now, there are a couple of good things like we get this FM radio app by default over here. So if you plug in a headset, you can definitely use FM radio if you're someone who still listens to FM. And we have this Google's recorder app over here working totally fine. And as you can see, if I go into this transcript mode, as you can see, it's live transcripting my audio, whatever I'm saying. So that is really, really great that this actually works. Talking about a few other things like this LED RGB remote app and stuff. And as you are noticing over here, it is working totally fine. The IR Blaster works totally fine. It does not make the device reboot or something or force reboot over here like it used to do. But right now it's not a problem over here. It works super fine. The IR Blaster over here is working totally fine. No issues with that. Talking about the safety net, as you can see, it passes the safety net test right out of the box. So that means you can use Google Pay or any other banking apps over here without any issues. Also talking about the DRM info, as you are noticing, the certificate still shows L1. So that means you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime in 1080p in this ROM without any issues if you have not broken your DRM certification. Now it's time to show you guys the benchmarks. And here we have the GFX benchmark scores. And here is the Android 2 and Geekbench score. So from those scores, you can definitely assume that the performance of this ROM is still pretty good. And in terms of daily driving, this ROM is gonna be really, really great. And by the way, this is how the recent panel looks like. We have the screenshot and then selection option. So yeah, this is how the recent panel looks like. We can go to the split screen mode or something if you want to from here. Jumping into the settings, we have the battery settings over here. This is how it looks like. And as you're noticing, we have the last full charge, the screen on time. Then we have the turn on the light when charging. That This is for the notification light, which is present on the bottom. And 18 watt fast charging is also working fine here. No issues with that. And adaptive battery option is there. Then we have the battery saver mode. And also, if you want to see the full battery usage, you have to tap on the three dots on the top, right? And you can see the full battery usage from here. And the battery life should be good enough. You can get seven to eight hours of screen on time easily on this ROM if your battery's health is good. And talking about the Vault calling and stuff or view Wi-Fi, those should be working fine, but I don't have a SIM card in it. So that's why I am not able to show you guys, but Vault calling should be working fine here. In the display settings, this is how it looks like. If I tap on advanced, as you can see, there are a lot more options. Let me show you one by one. On top, we have the brightness level. Then we have the dark theme option. And there we have the nightlight. And of course, you can schedule the dark theme and nightlight both. Adaptive or auto brightness is there. So that is cool. And we have the live display option. From here, you can set the color calibration to like the RGB control. And here we have the hue, saturation, indice, and contrast customization. Let me go back. We have the styles and wallpapers. And from here, if you try to customize the theme, as you can see, there are all these icons. I mean the fonts and there are these icons. And if you go next, we have these accent colors. Yes, there are not much, but yes, you can actually create a custom theme and apply them to get these accent colors. And in terms of wallpapers, we have all these wallpapers over here by default, and you can download the live wallpapers too. But let me show you this wallpaper which I'm using is from the Wallp app, which I'll link in the description box below. And if you want to look at the grid option, we have up to four by four grid and the default option is there. Then we have the screen timeout and here we have up to like 30 minutes option. I'll set that. Let me scroll down. We have the rotation option and you can set 180 degree rotation and stuff. And if you scroll down more, we have the notch behavior. So you can actually have like the top notch on like with a black border or something if you want to. And then we have the lock screen option. And here we have the wake screen for notification. You can disable it if you want to. And then we also have the double tap to wake, the double tap to sleep and wake up on plug. And we have the prevent accidental wake up. Yes, double tap to sleep and double tap to wake both works fine here. No issues with that. In the sound settings, this is how it looks like. By the way, this is how the volume panel looks and you can expand it over here. And if you scroll down, we have the increased ring volume and stuff. Then if you scroll down more, we have the dial pad tones, screen locking sound, etc. disabling option. But sadly, I could not find the Mi Audio Dirac option over here. But the sound output via the headphone jack is good enough. But yes, again, the Mi Audio Dirac is kind of missing right now, I would say. And inside security, this is how it looks like. And if you tap on the settings icon, we have the scramble pin layout and stuff. Then power button instantly locks option is there. 
and we have the face unlock over here. But first, let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed. I just deleted my face data so that my fingerprint only works. So let me actually show you just by double tapping over here. And if I tap the fingerprint scanner, and as you can see, the device has unlocked. Let me show you up close. And as you are noticing, the fingerprint scanner speed is fairly, fairly fast. No issues whatsoever. The fingerprint scanner is very reliable over here. No issues with that. Right now, let me set up the face unlock again. And we have this unlock with a glance kind of thing. And it shows this kind of animation on top. Let me click on setup, then hit next. I have some obstacle in front of my face, but still the face unlock did set up. And right now, if I try to use the face unlock, I'll just double tap over here and double tap to wake. And as you can see, this is the face unlocking speed. As you can see again, the face unlock works flawlessly, no issues whatsoever. And even after setting the face unlock, the fingerprint scanner also works. So the Pixel Experience Plus ROM on the Redmi Note 7 Pro. And I would say this is a really great ROM if you just want a stock Android experience with a little bit of touch of the customizations. You can go with the Pixel Experience Plus ROM or if you don't want customization at all, you just want to experience Android 11 just on the stock side, you can go with the Pixel Experience ROM. And again, if you want to flash it, you will find the card right there or you can check the description of this video. So thank you so much for watching this video guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel down there if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.